In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up a drum loop in Studio One. I got an email question about, I did a video where there was a drum loop, kind of, I just mentioned in passing, and then I was doing something on an audio track right next to the drum loop, and people were saying, what, 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 what's, what is that? And I realized, like, I've been using Studio One for over a decade, I've been doing audio production for 20 years, so a lot of the stuff that comes second nature to me, and that I've been doing for a long time, I realized that's going to be new for somebody. So if you've never set up a drum loop in Studio One, specifically using an instrument and using MIDI, which is digital notes on the page that trigger a sound, I'm not talking about an actual, like, drum loop audio file, although those exist too. I'm talking about creating your own at whatever tempo you want. This video is going to show you how. So I'm using Studio One version 6, and the easiest way to do this, uh, and I love that we added these in, we added in a bunch of really handy templates into Studio One uh, back when we, I think it was with the launch of version 6. So when you open Studio One, you're going to be here on the start page, okay? Click on New, and that's going to open up this window that might be set to either user or template. And click on the templates tab here and scroll down until you see one that says produce beats. Now you may say, I've never produced a beat in my life. Well, you're going to produce one today. Click on that. Select that. Come over here. You can give it a name if you want. I'm going to call this maketh a loop. Um, you can set all the settings here. Let's make the tempo... Let's make it like a like a slow jam, 90 BPM. That feels good. And I'm going to hit OK. Here's something cool that happens. You may not have known this happens. It's got a built-in tutorial that's going to walk you through how this works. So it says, want to create an awesome beat with just a few clicks? Then look no further than this beat-making template. See, I just told you that same thing. Click Next. It comes down here to this lower section and says, you can enter notes or rhythms for any instrument currently selected on the track list either manually by clicking any of the steps inside the grid or by using the convenient shortcut buttons. Uh, example, set every fourth step. So these let me automatically add some things in. Let's We'll see what that means in a second. If I click Next, it says I can change the step length right here by saying if it's 16 steps or whatever. Um, we can do automate. Okay, this is all nice to know, but not for the person who's wanting to set up their very first beat, um, we don't need to know any of that. So it opens up. And you may look on the screen and say, okay, this looks vaguely familiar, but mostly not familiar. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, you'll notice that there are three tracks up here, but they don't have any audio. You'll notice there is a loop going that's set to three bars instead of four for some reason. Uh, and you'll notice that each of these is called something different. This says drum pattern. This says bass line. This says something, if we stretch this out, chord slash arp. And as I click on these... The thing down here changes, which is interesting. So let's stick with drum pattern for now. And you'll notice that we've got all these listed drum sounds down here. What happens if I just click on this kick low? Oh, uh, I see. It is triggering some sort of a sound. Where's that sound coming from, you might ask? Good question. It's coming from Impact, which is our drum sampler that comes with Studio One. How do I get there? Well, on this channel here, you'll notice there's this little icon of a sort of looks like a keyboard. Um, that's the instrument editor. If I click on that, it opens whatever instrument this track is playing. Okay. Um, so to review, this that we're seeing down here, this is a pattern. This is the let allows us to create a pattern that will just repeat over and over. This pattern shows up up here. This is this. This down here is like the zoomed in version of this pink region. And when I click on instrument editor, I can see these are the sounds I have available to me. So this is that same thing I was clicking here. This is the instrument. So I can come in here to tweak the instrument or even change the instrument. For now, we're just going to leave it. We're going to leave it like it is when we first brought it in. And I'm going to say, okay, I want like a four on the floor kick thing. We take a look at this. These four sections are our four quarter notes. I can click here. I can click here. I can click here. I can click here. If I press play. Okay, we got ourselves four on the floor. Let's say we're like, okay, 90 BPM was too slow. We can come down here to the bottom and we can just add a new tempo. Let's go up to like 130. Press play, space bar. Like that we got ourselves a loop now we can do more things obviously if we hover over these notes we can make them disappear also remember how it pointed to this little area here this is pretty handy this allows me to do every fourth step every second step 
every or fill the entire lane. So I could do, if I click this one, oh, that gives me four on the floor. Click this one. Okay, if I click this one, and this one makes it go back to empty. This one, I always forget what this one does, shifts it over. So if it's four on the floor, it shifts it over by a beat. So if you want to have like a bunt, bunt, like a reggae kind of thing, uh, we can clear this out. We can go four on the floor. So what's another sound that we would want out of this? Like a hi-hat, right? Some sort of ch -ch -ch -ch. Something like that. How often do we want that to be? It could be quarter notes with a kick drum. It's a little lame. How about every other or eighth notes? And then you want maybe a snare sound just to give you something other than that low end. Great. Let's do the snare on the two and the four. So this is a 16 step sequencer. So if you do a little bit of math, it's 16 steps. And this is a song that's in four, four, which means the beats go one, two, three, four. So even though it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's 16 steps to this sequencer. But the quarter notes, you can kind of see it's a little bit a different color here. This is beat one, this is beat two, this is beat three, this is beat four. So we typically want the snare on beats two and four. So now we've got. Now this, for a lot of people, they may not want to record, like say you want to record a guitar vocal thing. And you go to record and you learned how to set up the metronome in Studio One, which is down here. You turn that on, you hit play. And you just think, you know what? That doesn't sound very musical. I'm having a hard time playing along to that, keeping the tempo. That's totally fine. By the way, I would encourage you to get good at playing to the metronome. It'll unlock a lot for you musically. But maybe early on, that's just not really doing it for you. You can open up this template and start off by creating yourself a simple drum loop. And you can keep it as simple as that, uh, or you can make it be a little more like kick beats a little bit. Right? Just a couple of clicks and it gives it a groove or you can keep it super straight and you can add the groove by whatever it is that you record. The cool thing about this, it's a pattern. You may have noticed this is just four bars, but this or this is just a single bar, but this is extending out to four. What happens when I click on the edge here? You'll see it turns into like a little side arrow and I drag this out. Oh, it just repeats forever. So I could say repeat this for the next five minutes, and then I'm gonna add a new track and record a song. And just like that, we have ourselves a drum loop. Now let's say, let's say you've done this, and you think, that's great, I'd like something that sounds a little more like my style of music. Well, let's click on this, that little uh, instrument button there, come up into Impact, which is the instrument that we're playing, and let's just click on this button here, this drop-down menu, will give us other options. So maybe we go with Artful Garage. That will change the tones, and when I hit play, I don't, I've never been to that garage. How about Chill Out Garage? And we can just keep going until we find something. Let's say we want to find something that sounds more like just a regular old drum kit, maybe Easy Kit. Let's see. That's kind of neat. The other thing you can do, see this button here? You can just cycle through them as you listen. So I press play, and then I just cycle through or press page down until I find something I like. So just with a simple beat, we can get a lot of different vibes just by changing out what kit that we're using. Uh, if you're a Studio One Plus member, you have access to a lot of extra kits in your account, so be sure to dive into that uh, and get all the cool sounds because there's a lot of cool stuff there. So this is how you set up a simple drum loop. Now we can use this as the basis for something that we record. This You don't even have to use this in the final song. Maybe this is just your guideline to record a couple of guitars, a couple of piano parts, some vocals, and then maybe you record drum drums later. Or maybe the song doesn't have drums, but you use this to keep your tempo as you record. It's a super useful tool, especially for folks who think, I don't use drum loops, or I don't use drums. This is a great alternative to a metronome, so I recommend putting it into your workflow. My name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.